Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, it's Jay, welcome to my channel. And for today's video, it's another Harry Potter fan theory video. I was scrolling through my YouTube and I saw Miss Mojo and I thought, I haven't watched Miss Mojo in a while, let's have a look at what videos they have, specifically Harry Potter ones, because I've probably watched most of them. But turns out I haven't, and they've got one here saying, top 10 Harry Potter fan theories we want to be true. So I thought, let's take a look through the 10 theories and do we want them to be true? Do we not? Excuse my appearance, I don't normally wear makeup or my hair in ponytails, but if you head over to my YouTube shorts, you should find out shortly what this is all about. If you want to stick around and see what these fan theories are, please do. If you like this content, hit the like button. If you want to subscribe, do so. And without further ado, let's get started. Oh, that's bright. In the comments. Jesus, Dumbledore. Number 10. You think you're God. Hagrid got Aragog from Newt. Rubius Hagrid is an... This one, I think we've all definitely thought Hagrid was getting some of his beasts from Newt. I definitely thought he got um, Aragog from Newt, specifically when the Fantastic Beasts series came out and they were all going about it going, oh, I bet you Newt gave Hagrid Aragog. I, I, I want this to be true. That's why this one is definitely one I want to be true. Hardened lover of magical creatures. Her dangerous fascination began at a very young age, when the large lad was given an acromantula egg, which hatched into the giant Ooh. spider Aragog. Like, I'm not scared of spiders, but... Spider, an unnamed traveller gave Hagrid this egg. I'm not scared of spiders, I just hate, like, clusters of bugs and things like that, so when I see all them spiders, I'm like... Ugh. That makes me feel ill. However, fans have speculated that this traveller was none other than Newt Scamander, noted author of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Not only would this be a cool connection between the different eras of the Wizarding World story so far, but also between two of the greatest proponents of magic. I love alchemies. Beasts. Number nine, Wizard Muggle War. Wizard Muggle War, I wonder what that could mean. Like, have they had a war already and that's why wizards are hiding themselves? How long will it take before they turn their weapons on us? This isn't so much something we want to be true as no. something we think would add no. an interesting dimension to the narrative. There is plenty of resentment from both the magical and non-magical communities for one another to go around, from wizard supremacists to witch burnings. But some fans theorize that open warfare it's between so weird seeing Johnny and Depp. muggles may have occurred at some point in the past. While wizards have always been a minority, there are those who believe they once had larger numbers, and that their secrecy and lack of technological development is the result of their widespread desire to avoid contact with muggles after oh, a huge conflict. That makes sense. Because they've been suppressed for so long, they can't really develop things like muggles can like they we've developed like loads of things and then so with the wizard being suppressed they don't have the creativity or the way to do things without being exposed ah the wizarding world has regularly altered muggles memories so erasing an entire war isn't unfeasible never yeah true because they've done that they obliviated the whole city number eight crookshanks belonged to lily Yes, 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 yes. I have heard this theory so many times that Crookshank used to be James and Lily's cat and it would make sense because he knows that Sirius Black is the dog and is an animagus. How would he know who Sirius Black is? He's so friendly with him right off the bat. How does he know that Sirius Black's innocent and he's trying to get scabbers and because it's Peter? How does Crookshank know that? James and Lily's cat. I think I don't even need to play this, but I think I've just explained it for you. Crookshank displays unusual intelligence in the books. <laughs> Sorry. And manages to sniff out Peter Pettigrew, who's disguised as Ron's rat Scabbard, and by his mother, which claims that she had a cat. cat. This, combined with Crookshanks' connection to the two marauders, mm -hmm. has led some to believe that the feline recognized both, and yes. that he was once Lily Potter's Agreed. cat. Agreed. Number seven. Neville wasn't bad at magic. He was using the wrong wand. Ooh. Neville Longbottom is something okay. of a class dunce. At least at first. Bless him. I love Neville though. You gotta love that underdog. We weren't saying that when we destroyed the snake. Not oh, were they? particularly good in school, except for herbology. But Neville does become a better wizard and a more confident one mm -hmm. as the series goes on. And you had to have someone to believe in him. And who is it? Harry. Some fans have theorized that this is because he eventually got a new wand after his first was destroyed. His first wand used to belong to his father. Oh, 
That makes sense, actually. A magic can be done with the wand you haven't chosen, mm -hmm. or which hasn't chosen you. You can win it of someone in battle. Usually best, which is why some fans believe Neville's poor performance can be partially attributed to having the wrong wand. That makes sense a little bit, because obviously wands can be one of in battle. Like if you disarm them, the wand changes allegiance to the person who won it. So that's why obviously when Draco disarmed Dumbledore, he became master of the wand and then Harry disarmed Draco and then he became master of the wand because it changes allegiances because it's beaten the wizard in battle. It's taken the wand off him. So if he's got his dad's wand, it might not have worked properly, maybe. He might have taken his dad's wand for sentimental reasons because, oh, it's my dad's wand. I'm going to use my dad's wand. But it might not have been properly loyal to him, so it didn't work. I like that theory. I'll agree with that. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Number six, the sorting hat can see the future. The wizards are instructed to don the sorting hat, mm -hmm. a talking piece of headwear that sorts them into one of the four houses. Not Conventional wisdom is that they're placed in the houses of the traits they most exhibit or value. Mm -hmm. However, given how many issues there are with a hat's opinion determining your future at age 11, based mm -hmm. on a few seconds on your head, some fans have enough... It's like when you're younger and people are like oh what do you want to be when you grow up what do you want to be when you grow up and it's like you don't know what your life's going to be like down the line when you're 11 or when you're going through school and you're going through your exams and things so how is that sorting hat for five seconds going to know if he's put them in the right house just based on their personality i mean look at Pettigrew. he literally should have been in slytherin i mind you they do do hat stalls because it happened to hermione and mcgonagall um but yeah that's a good point but Let's see if it gets to how it can tell the future. If the sorting hat sorts students into houses not based on what their traits are when they're sorted, but on who they are in the future. Pretty cool. Then it got Pettigrew wrong because he was a snake. What if the sorting hat is merely an instrument of destiny? And Neville should, as much as he's a Gryffindor, I think he should have been a Hufflepuff feel person. very conflicted though. Number five, George is Willy Wonka. <laughs> what? Now this is a crazy crossover. Mm -hmm. According to this theory, George Weasley, the surviving Weasley twin, goes back in time and changes his name to Willy Wonka. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry, I can't take that seriously. He goes back in time and changes his name to Willy Wonka. With the assistance of a race of probably magical workers, Wonka creates almost certainly magical candy for the world's children. Both characters share a love of pranks and whimsical products. Yeah, I'll tell you, take that, but I don't think he's Willy Wonka, no. The theory would certainly see George fulfill his and his late brother's dream to the utmost extreme. Although, if it were true, hopefully George is more Wilder Wonka than Death Wonka. Mm. If only because it'd be weird if he had the same face as Grindelwald. Yeah. Number four, the Dursleys hated Harry because of the Horcrux. Okay, we've all now thought about this CD since the last film came out and the last book that we found out how he was a horcrux and how the horcrux affects people when it's around it because we found out what happened with the locket that we now think that harry was affecting the dursleys due to him being a horcrux i agree and i don't agree with it because i think they before harry even got there because mcgonagall said in the first film i watched them all the time they're the worst kind of muggles imaginable and harry wasn't even in their lives yet i think they generally are half horrible people that hated harry himself because he was a horcrux so was it there's no such thing as magic the dursley family are positively terrible to harry growing up mm -hmm. while not physically abusive they're certainly neglectful and they heavily favor their son dudley over him their hatred of magic is definitely a major reason mm -hmm. for their treatment of him yeah. however some fans think it may have something to do with the fragment of Voldemort's soul living in Harry. Short contact with one Horcrux makes someone as steadfast as Ron Weasley turn nasty mm -hmm. and run out on his friends. This is the thing where the theory gets a bit weird. Like, if it only affects the Dursleys, why would it not affect the people around him? Because it does work on magical people. Horcrux affects magical people, as we've seen. But being around Harry all the time, wouldn't everyone else feel like the Dursleys? This is where sometimes the theory doesn't add up. Or did it just bring out more of the Dursley's bad side? Because they're already awful. Years of being around Harry, the theory goes, helped turn the Dursleys into the nasty people they are. Still, it all falls apart when you realize how much time Harry has spent around See? his friends. See? If it were the Horcrux, he wouldn't have any friends at Hogwarts. Hmm. Number three, Harry is immortal. Life and death. I've heard of this one as well. I want to hear what they say. 
but I have heard this theory before. Are major motifs in the Harry Potter franchise, particularly around Harry and Voldemort. I can't take this seriously. I can't take this scene seriously anymore because everyone just takes the piss out of it. I can't take it seriously anymore because people go, oh, God, oh, like, I, I can't take it seriously. The Dark Lord seeks to live forever. But what if his young foe accomplished what he tried so hard for by accident? The see about these two states that neither can live while the other survives. The usually accepted interpretation of this is that one must kill the other in order to live. But some fans suggest that with Voldemort dead, Harry can no longer be killed at all. Oh. The boy lived indeed. No. Because a part of... I don't think so. Voldemort's dead. Harry can now live forever. You are the boy who lived. Number two. The first book's finale foreshadowed parts of the whole series. The franchise has lots of foreshadowing, mm -hmm. but some Tumblr users have suggested that the end of the first book specifically is a roadmap for the series. When Harry and company enter the chambers protecting the Philosopher's Stone, they mm -hmm. encounter a dangerous plant. Get us some stuff! Oh, no, I can't that. The next book, they run into the Whopping Willow. The next mm -hmm. trial in Philosopher's Stone sees them using brooms, and in Azkaban, Harry has a particularly dangerous Quidditch match. I think not predicts anything. Pieces look like gravestones, just like when Harry duels Voldemort in book mm. four. I'll give them credit for the um, chess pieces because when they walked in, it's like, I think Harry says it's some sort of graveyard, and Ron's like, no, it's a chessboard, so they do look like headstones. And there was supposed to be a troll, and then they meet Hagrid's half brother, who's half giant. So I'll give that merit. The broomstick one, not really. The other three, I'll give some merit. The penultimate chamber has a potions challenge from Snape. Snape, and the penultimate book features Snape's connection to a potions book. Mm -hmm. And lastly, there's the piece with Voldemort. Voldemort. Crazy, right? Before we okay. get to our top pick, here are a few, few honorable, honorable mentions. mentions. Malfoy the werewolf. Was I've heard this. Rest or suffering from lycanthropy. I'll give them this because he was around Death Eaters and one of them was Fenrir Greyback, who we all know turned Lupin into a werewolf. Show me the bite mark. Where did he bite him? Vada Kedavra, Abracadabra. Muggles may have remembered this heinous spell with some different sounds. Uh, I heard this too. Dumbledore is deaf. His appearance in Leo yeah. and the Three Brothers story have fans drawing the comparison. I agree with this one as well. Like, I've heard theories that obviously Harry, Voldemort, and Snape are the Peveril brothers and Dumbledore's death. And when you delve deep into that theory, it makes a hell of a lot of sense. Ron is a time traveling Dumbledore. Ridiculous? Yes. Interesting? Also, yes. Number one. Why none of us got our Hogwarts letters? Many Harry Potter fans have imagined how I want to know. I waited 28 years for my letter and it's 29. To receive a letter from Hogwarts, learn that magic is real, and mm -hmm. have our childhood dreams come true. The theory posits that there's a very good reason why children of this generation never got our letters. Voldemort. It is Miss Burbage's belief that Muggle It's always him. He ruins everything. The theory goes that when you know who took power, he destroyed the records of all potential young British muggle-born witches and wizards at the Ministry of Magic. So anyone born before 1997 or 98 wouldn't have gotten their letter because the Ministry wouldn't have known to send it. It chose me. Sadly, those of us born in other countries will have to formulate our own theories. If you are one of those people <laughs> didn't get their letter because of Voldemort, let me know in the comments, because I didn't. I want to call him a very, very bad word, but I'm not swearing on here. So that's it, guys. That is Miss Mojo's top 10 Harry Potter fan theories they wish were true. Which one do you think is valid enough? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you again for watching. Again, if you want to see why my hair is like this, keep an eye out on my YouTube shorts. Um, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up. If you want to see more from me, subscribe. And I will see you guys next time in another video. Bye.